Are you guys ready? Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Cisco's annual spelling bee. This is round one of our spelling bee. How it's going to go is Betsy will say a word and give it to one group to respond within a minute on how you would spell the word. If you got it correct, we'll go on and we'll do another word with the next group. If you got it wrong, you get a strike. Three strikes and you are eliminated from the competition. All right. As we go on, the words will get tougher. So we're going to start off with level one words. Everyone will get a chance to answer at least one level one word. Everybody got it? Yes. Have any questions? Not yet. Yes. Say that again. Up to a minute. Up to a minute. Yep, yeah, correct. So we are allowed to write the word. Yep. Oh, okay. You can write on the papers in front of you. Work together with your partner. Yes. We can use it in a sentence, right? If you'd like for us to use it in a sentence, yes. we can do that as well, if that's helpful. So one other question. Yes. Uh, are, capital, are capital letters part of the spelling? No. Okay. So what I'm worried about. If it's a proper noun, we'll make that decision that it doesn't matter so whether you capitalize it. Yeah, there's a little dance. But if it's an improper <laughs> and I like those now. As the words get harder, bear with us. We are going to use a translator so we can make sure we pronounce them correctly for you. Okay. <laughs> Define clean. <laughs> so we need to decide. Do you want us to use the mic as we go down and answer? Okay. Okay. I will start with the first level one word. Cleave. The first word is cleave. Cleave. C L E A V E. Cleave. Correct. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, the next level one word. Venomous. Venomous, as in a venomous snake. Venomous. 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 <laughs> I'm from New York. V-E-N-O-M-O-U-S. Correct. 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 <laughs> All right. The next word is handyman. Handyman. I need a handyman to fix my window. 
H-A-N-N-A-H-A-N-N-A-H-A-N-N-A-H-A-N-N-A-H-A-N-N-A-H-A-N-N-A-H-A-N-N-A-H-A-N-N-A-H-A-N-N-A-H-A-N-N-A-
time is almost up. Cataclysmic. C A T A C L Y S M I C. Correct. Cataclysmic. All right, another round. Bossiness. Team number one. Bossiness. You can write it out if you need to. Bossiness. B O S S I N E S S. Correct. Team number two. Espousal. Espousal. Let me know if you need to use it in a sentence. Espousal. E S P O U S A L. Correct. All right, team number three, Jurassic, as in Jurassic Park or the Jurassic period. Jurassic. J U R A S S I C. Correct. All right. Diffraction. Diffraction. Use it in a sentence, please. I'm going to make sure I do this correctly. It's defracture. Defraction. Defraction. The action of making forcible entry. Defraction. Criminal effraction of a house. Defraction into a store. E F R A C T I O N. That is incorrect. Oh yay! <laughs> it's it's E F F R A C T I O N. Yeah, I've I've not heard that one before. I've heard of infraction, but not an effraction. <laughs> All right, who remembers this from school? Binomial. Binomial. Remember that? It kind of is. Binomial theorem. Yes. I was a journalism major, so I forgot all that by the time I got to college. Binomial. It's a mathematical expression. Binomial. B I N O M I A. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Thrasonical. Thrasonical. I want to spell it, but I can't do that, right? <laughs> Could you please use that in a sentence? Sure. The, the definition is of relating to, resembling, or characteristics of uh, Brazo, bragging and boastful. Um, I think you need to just put like put that in, use in a sentence. Just yeah, I don't need the definition of a sentence. I think. Can you say the word? Yes. Let me make sure I pronounce it. Not since the superb Mondor amazed the world has so versonical a bully been seen upon the stage. I don't usually talk like that. Let's go ahead and hit that too, make sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. I need to know where to put the. It means, yeah, it's thrace, thraceonical. Thraceonical. And it means boastful and then vainglorious. Thraesonical. 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 Oh, T-H-R-A-Y-S-O-N-I-C-A-L. There is no Y. It's Yeah. 
is to multiply the words to what you can't say. Like you. Oh. Like you. Okay, meaning. You can't say it. Skip over it. We can do translation. We have a translation app. Would that be helpful? Is it pronounced thread or thread? Thread. It's pronounced thread according to the translation app. Okay, the next one is cottonwood. Cottonwood. I know, they all are. I know. Correct. Sesame. Sesame. Like a sesame seed. Sesame. S E S A M E. Sesame. Correct. All right. How did you do with the foot? Metatarsal. 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 N E T A T A R S A L. Correct. <laughs> Down at the end here, Scrooge. Scrooge. That's it, that guy. That guy. <laughs> right from a Christmas carol. He's such a Scrooge. S C R O O C E. Correct. Resplendence. Resplendence. I heard you debating A and C E versus A. Sostenuto. Sostenuto. I don't know. But I'll, I'll say if you go back, you're going to go really fast there. Go back to what the, yeah. Sustained to or beyond the notes full value used as a direction in music. Sostenuto. Sostenuto. S O S T E N U T O. Correct. Sostenuto. Okay. Regalia. Regalia. R E G A L I A. Correct. Juvenilia. Juvenilia. <laughs> Juvenilia. 
that is compositions produced in the artist's or author's youth. Juvenilia. J U V E N I L I A. Correct. I'm learning from new work today. Taekwondo. Taekwondo. It's a martial art, one of the martial arts. Okay, that's the last one. What are all the two? Taekwondo. T A I K W O N D O. Incorrect. It is T A E K W O N D O. All right, we are now going to level three words. All right, I want a pronunciation, please. I think I know what it is, but. Hypertrophy. 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 Increase in bulk as by thickening of muscle fibers. Excessive development of an organ or part. Hypertrophy. H Y P E R T R O P H Y. Correct. Correct. Solacism. 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 An ungrammatical combination of words in a sentence. A minor blunder in speech. Solacism. Solipsism. S O L E C I S M. Correct. Correct. Okay. All right, next word. Telenovela. Telenovelas. Telenovelas. A soap opera produced in and televised in or from many Latin American countries. Telenovelas. Telenovela. T E L E. Can I, I'm going to read for that. Telenovelas. Novelas? Plural. Plural. Telenovelas. T E L E N O V E L A S. Correct. <laughs> Why are we going all the way down that way? Other direction. No, the no, no, last two lines. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Moistenite. <laughs> uh, the Japanese. Moistenite. Yeah. <laughs> Moistenite. Moistenite. <laughs> that is. A silicon carbide found in the Diablo Canyon meteoric iron. <laughs> it's actually, yeah, it's a it's a stone. <laughs> it's a fancy word for a stone. <laughs> Moissanite. Sometimes people use them instead of diamonds. M-O-I-S-I-N-I-T-E. That is incorrect. I'm out! <laughs> I've never seen someone, someone so happy about it. 
It's M O I S S A N I T E. All right. First casualty of Kisco's annual selling day. Rinso. 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 I will use it in a sentence. Rinso. An ornamental motif consisting essentially of a sinuous and branching scroll elaborated with leaves and other natural forms. I thought I will use it in a sentence. Please, will you pronounce it again? We, we can't hear you. Rinso. 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 Rinso and flowery border decorations outline a depiction of Mary at the center of the Court of the Apostles. It is in an ornamental foliage or floral motif. So you would see it in paintings or in artwork. Rinso. R-I-N-S-O. Incorrect. It's R-I-N-C-E-A-U. So it seems to be almost like a French derivative. Well, why are we using court church in America? I know. <laughs> it is an English word, but it may be <laughs> I don't know. I didn't choose the words. I'm just reading the words. <laughs> I think they're hard. I wouldn't want to do what you're doing. Cortege. 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 Yeah. Cortege. That is. A train of attendants, a procession. Sometimes you'll hear a funeral cortege. C O R T E G E. Correct. Have to start okay. Oh, interpolate. That's not how I would, but interpolate. Interpolate. Can you spell that for me? <laughs> <laughs> I would have pronounced it differently, but um, to question, it's a transitive verb. To question formally concerning an official action or policy or personal conduct. And let's pre so that's, Well, that's, yeah, how did he say it? Interpolate. How did, I'm sorry, have the Google do it again? They were right. I agree. That's not how he did. She did it differently. So, I mean, he did it differently. Can we? I think we're supposed to spell it correctly, right? Not yeah, it's, he pronounced it interpellate. Oh, I said interpellate. That's what. That's how I would. The guy Oh, right. We're using a tran. We're using basically the computer to pronounce it, but I've always have interpellate. Well, yeah. That's a different word. That is a different yeah, and so that's why I'm kind of a little concerned about it. Um, let's not. I, I would rather go with the way the computer does it because I don't want to confuse it with. What should we do? Let's have a different word. I'm not comfortable with that. I just don't. I think that that's not a good idea. If we have two different pronunciations on the computer, I'm not doing that. So let's go with a different word. Oh, I know what this is. I know how to pronounce this. Crokenbush. 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 
I don't think that's the word, honestly. Um, Krokenbusch, that's a dessert. So it's a cone shaped stack of cream puffs coated with caramelized sugar. You see that a lot of times at holiday time, Krokenbusch. I've never seen one. Never heard of one. <laughs> Do you watch the Holiday Baking Championship? They often have the croquembouche on there. Croquembouche, it's a tower of cream puffs, and it has spun sugar around it. Well, I think I would rather do uh, interpolate. All right, interpolate. How about it? Interpolate. Interpolate, or interpolate, as you said. Um, I-N-T-E-R-P-O-L-A-T-E. -E. No. That's why, that's why I was trying to go with what was in the computer. It's I-N-T-E-R-P-E-L-L-A-T-E. -E -E. It wasn't interpolate. Yeah. Okay. All right. Croquembouche is, is, a, is a tower of pre-puffs. <laughs> yeah, I tried it now. <laughs> Okay. No one's doing croquembouche. We're done with that. Okay. Athenium. Athenium. The definition of athenium. A building or room in which books, periodicals, and newspapers are kept for use. A literary or scientific association. An Athenaeum. A T H E N E U M. Incorrect. A T H E N A E U M. Oh, or A T H E N E U M. You got it. Okay. Oh, we got it. <laughs> Looks like what was kind of a more Latin version in there. All right, who's up next? Offhandedly. Off-handedly. Just look up off-handedly. Would you like to use it in a sentence or? A quick off-handed suggestion that was actually much better than any of the prepared proposals. Um, off-handedly. Definition, please, for off handedly. Off handedly. O S S H A N D E D L Y. Could you, I'm sorry, could you spell that again? Off-handedly. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yes. Connoisseur. Connoisseur. No, close. C O N N O I S S E U R. Connoisseur. How do they pronounce it? 
Hum it. Hum it. Hum it. Hum it. <laughs> All right, let me let me do the definition. Hang on. A rounded knoll, a ridge of ice. Hum it. H U M M. O C K. Correct. <laughs> Glyceraldehyde. Oh my god. <laughs> Glyceraldehyde. Glyceraldehyde. A sweet crystalline compound that is formed as an intermediate in carbohydrate metabolism by the breakdown of sugars. Basically when you eat a brownie. Glyceraldehyde. G-L-Y-C-E-R-A-L-D-E-H-Y-D-E. -E. Correct. Whoa. I know. The scientist in the room. Moraine. 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 That's you. Yep. Moraine. Uh, an accumulation of earth and stones carried and finally deposited by a glacier. Moraine. In Australia. Big Australians here. Australia. Kapuka. Kapuka. Can you say it again? Kapuka. I will go ahead and give you a, part, um, a definition. An area of older land ranging in size from a few square feet to several square miles surrounded by later lava flows. A kapuka. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds kind of funny. That's a silly, doesn't it? Kapuka. Sounds Hawaiian. Say it again. Kapuka. Having to do with a, a, a landmass uh, by a lava flow. Kapuka. In this kapuka, birds have priority over humans. K A P U Q U A? No. It's K I P U K A. <laughs> Who's next here? All right.
demulcent. 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 That's okay. If you want me to come closer, it's demulcent. Uh, it would be soothing. Soothing. Demulcent. A usually, a usually, well, that's not soothing. A usually oily substance that can soothe or protect an abraded mucous membrane. <laughs> How about a snack? Demulcent. <laughs> uh, again, I, I can't hear what you're saying. Right. Sure. Okay. The right ear is Are you saying okay. demulcion? No. But that's that's all right, we'll do it. It is. <laughs> and I, all I want to do is spell it for you. Demulcent. 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 If you want to soothe your mucous membranes, you will need something demulcent. Demulcent. D e m u l s c e n t. That is incorrect. D e m u l c e n t. There is no s in there. It's a tricky one. Ammonite. All right, team. Team number one. Ammonite. Ammonite. Definition. Yeah. Any of a subclass of extinct cephalopods, especially abundant in the Mesozoic age, that had flat spiral shells with the interior divided by septa into chambers. <laughs> On the tip of my tongue. I knew that. <laughs> Ammonite. Ammonite. A M M O N I T E. Correct. Correct. Woo. All right, team number two. Parathis. 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 I will give you the definition. Parathis. Read it backwards. Say it again. Parathis. Parathas. Should I? Let's go to the, I, I don't want to get. It's an unleavened Indian wheat bread that is usually fried on a griddle. That's a paratha. Parathas is the plural. Parathas. Oh, okay. So it's an Indian word. It is. I, and I think, yeah, not Native American, I think in India. An unleavened Indian wheat bread that is usually fried on a griddle is paratha. So the plural of that would be parathas. Parathas. P a r a p h a s. Correct. D A R A P H A S. 
proselytize her. Proselytize her. Proselytize her. Proselytize her. To induce, well, someone who induces someone to convert to one's faith. A recruiter to join one's party. A proselytizer. Proselytizer. Say it again. Proselytizer. Proselytizer. Someone who is trying to convert people to one's faith. Is it in a sentence again? Um, or the, the uh, description? Sure. You go just a little bit. So, someone who induces people to convert to one's faith. Right. Prophetizer. P R O T H. E L A T I S E R? No. It's P R O S E L Y T I S E R. Proselytizer. Or, or Z E R or S E R. Either one is acceptable. Cornishon. Oh, yes. Cornishon. Cornishon. Yeah, I know they're tasty, aren't they? It's a little pickle. It's a sour gherkin, usually flavored with tarragon. French. Could you have the pronunciation again? I mean, it's... Cornichon. Yeah, it's, it's really pronounced... Cornichon. Cornichon, cornichon. Depends on who's saying it. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> a cornichon or cornichon. It's a little gherkin. It's a little pickle. They're tasty. Sometimes they're with sandwiches, sometimes on like a charcuterie platter. I've even seen them before with fondue. <laughs> cornichon, cornichon. It's pronounced two different ways. Some people corn cornichon, cornichon. I, I mean, cornichon is fine. That's like for the American pronunciation. It's only spelled one way, though. I know. I know. I only have the official spelling. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Oh, it's been a minute. Uh, C-O-R-N-E-S-C-I-A-N? No. How about C-I-O-N-E? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I try another one? <laughs> it's not three tries at each, uh, at each word. It's C-O-R-N-I-C-H-O-N. It's a C-H, but it's not Chan, it's Chan. All right, we have two teams left, two and three. Da, 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 da. What do we have next? Oh, gosh, I remember this. Similitude. Verisimilitude. Remember this? This was like an SAT word. Verisimilitude. The quality or state of... No, that's not helpful. <laughs> exactly. 
The appearance of being true or real. Their similitude. That's an SAT word. Remember, that was one of those words you get on standardized tests, the Iowa test. Verisimilitude. Could you pronounce that again slowly? Verisimilitude. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go with my spelling. I think it's D E R I S I M I. L I T U D E. You are correct. Wow. Sounds like it's got two L's but only has one. Sounded like you're saying vera rather very. So that's why. I know, and it's hard because most people don't say verisimilitude. Like if you're doing it phonetically, you might, but people say verisimilitude when they say it. How often do you say it? Well, only when I was doing the SAT. <laughs> I think I learned it in English class, Question. probably in high school, right? Uschen. Uschen. What? Uschen. You don't know that? <laughs> the action of burning. Uschen. Oh, that you should be able to do because it's, you know, think about it. Uschen. I'm not going to give you a hint, but think about it. See what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Think about the root word. Think Ushton. The, I think you're giving a hint. The action of burning. See, yeah, uh, maybe got it. Use it in a sentence, please. Give me heavy breathing. You know what it says? It says it's difficult to find Ushchin in the sentence. I'm not joking you. That's what Google says. So we're looking. <laughs> what are the chances? You know, the computer stumps. <laughs> it's difficult to find Ushchin in a sentence. Come on. That's a sentence with Ushchin in it. That's a sentence with Ushchin in it. I know. All right. Ustian. U S T G I A N. Ustian. No. U S T I O N, like combustion. Right? It had to do with heat. And. All right. Who's left here? Team two. Team two. You won. Congratulations, Ron and Laren. You are the best sellers at the Cardinal this year. So we have some medals for you. Pretty want to bring these up. Is there going to be a playoff? So these two fantastic gentlemen here will be representing us in the um, semifinals against all East Coast Kisco communities. If they manage to break through the second round, they will take it all the way to the finals where they'll face off against a West Coast finalist and hopefully bring home an actual trophy to our community. And we will be the uh, the uh, king of spelling for the year. So, but give it up for Larry and Ron. They crushed it. And for all of you.